speak. I mean, again, uh, it's an issue that's been resolved and we wish, uh, you know, the student athlete all the best. Um, and again, we work really collaboratively with the NCAA and, and West Virginia. And um, it was a very open and transparent process. And uh, there's uh, very little there. I know that uh, from a media perspective, all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, conspiracy theories or different things, but it's, uh, it's been handled. And uh, again, we're, you know, none of our staff or, or coaches or were involved in something. And uh, so it's uh, one of those issues that's been resolved. And uh, we wish, uh, wish the student athlete the best at West Virginia. Okay, now let's talk some Arizona football. Dave, when we had, we had you on, well, we've had you on a lot, but you said from the beginning with Jed Fish that you wanted, uh, when you hired him, you had to strip everything down, basically start from ground zero. Dave, don't be modest here. Do you th Did you think that it was going to be this fast of a rebuild where you're knocking off top 25 teams and knocking on the top 25 door? Be honest. Well, hey, we, we hired a good contractor. So he, he you know, they, our contractor and all those subs that he has, as I say, the, the coaches and, and our staff done a tremendous job. Um, I, you know, I didn't have a real timeline. I think that the key component here, and it's, it's hard to go through the pipe, hard to go through the grind sometimes, but was let's not shortcut anything. And right. Ed and I kind of came to that, you know, really together and, and understood that and really felt that was the best way. That's not shortcut anything, build it really up from the ground, strip everything apart and, and do the right things. And we're seeing the, you know, we're seeing that come to fruition. Now um, we've got a lot more to do. There's a lot more of the house to build and a lot more things that we can add to this, but uh, very happy with the progress and where we stand today. What's exciting too, is that there's nothing fluky about this. And that's what you talked about too, building it the right way. It's not like you're just out scheming and you know, a year from now, you're not going to have talent. You look at the talent across the board on this uh, roster, offense and defense. This is a pretty impressive setup right here, Dave. I mean, and it looks like something that going forward into the big 12, obviously you still got the pac 12. It's going to be able to compete pretty nicely. Well, we're excited about this year and our chance to, you know, to finish the season here. we got a lot of big games left. And, yeah, I, I, again, I like the pieces of our program, um, athletically, skill level, um, the quality of young men that are coming into the program. Uh, you know, it all bodes well. And uh, we, we, we're building a really – Jed does a great job of this, and his, his team, his staff does, and the players do this as well. A great culture. It's a great environment to be around. You know, the players feel part of something. That's all important stuff. Right. So, um, but you're right. I mean, obviously, you got to have the right kind of skill level. Um, you got to have depth. Uh, all those things are a little bit different, too. It's a little, you know, we all remember the way rosters were built and how it's built. It's a little different now. It's a little, it's much more tricky um, and I would say complex than it was 10 years ago. Uh, right. No doubt about that, even five years ago. So, uh, Jed and his team have done a really good job with that. I love the kind of team we roll out. When we come out of the tunnel, it, it, it looks good. All right, let's talk about the depth here a little bit. Then we're going to talk about attendance, some NIL questions, all of that good stuff. The depth to me is what's really astounding right here in just a short amount of time. Jaden Delora obviously has a really nice year last year. He goes down. Noah Fafita comes in and captures the imagination of the city and the country. There's something special with this kid out here, and that's a lot of kudos to Jed Fish, too, because not a lot of people offered him scholarships at the Power 5 level because they thought he was too small. Well, again, identifying talent, developing, done a great job of developing people while they're here mm -hmm. uh, that have been in those backup roles or in the depth chart. How do we make them better players so they're ready to go when they're here? Uh, when they when their chance their number kind of gets called right. um, yeah again I think our, our staff and our coaches and uh, really identify the kind of talent the kind of people that can come in here and and uh, and help us get better help us win games be great leaders in our locker room those are all important components to building the program so um, again depth whether it's at quarterback or at other spots across um, our roster that's an important piece so that you know this is a physical game. Uh, people get banged up. You've got to be able to – the next guy's got to be able to come in and perform at a really high level if you want that program that continues to compete and win on a regular basis. All right, Dave, we got to get a sellout here. UCLA obviously coming in here, top 25 team. I would venture a guess that if Arizona beats them, they'll be in the top 25. All I say is this. Arizona fans, you always hear about, oh, we've been beaten down, always waiting for the next shoe to drop. Just look at what Jed Fish has done. 
Look at what he's done. Everything he said has come to fruition. Nobody was going to outwork him. They were going to do it the right way. They were going to build talent. I'm saying Jed Fish has given you every single reason to buy into this program. We need a sellout here, Dave Hickey. Well, we do. I, I really hope that people will rally to Arizona Stadium this weekend. It's a great weekend, homecoming activities, a, you know, an opponent that uh, that drives the number as well. It's, you know, ha why not? You want, you've got UCLA in the house. Uh, the last time we will play them, mm -hmm. uh, probably for the foreseeable future, uh, certainly in a Pac-12 game. Um, let's go get it. You know, and again, like you mentioned, I think we've tried uh, as a department, as a program, Jed, uh, to embrace this community, um, to, to do the things he, he said he would do, how he would build the program, the kind of people he would bring into it. He uh, connected, you know, our alums to the great past that we have here. Those guys come to practice. They come to games it's like, wow, this is real, you know, and so. I do hope, I do hope all of Tucson, I do hope Southern Arizona, the state of Arizona, people realize now the next step of being a great program is having great fans and having a championship level fan base coming into places that are sold out on a regular basis, that are intense environments. That's that's what moves the needle, right? Okay, guys, and that's what moves the needle uh, on the economic model too. You've got to invest in the program. You have to be part of this. You have to buy tickets and get in the stadium. So that's my passionate plea. Uh, and also, doggone it, it's fun. Yes. It's good. We've been waiting for this. We want this. Take part in it. Get in the stadium and enjoy it and help our student athletes. Help our football program. Be part of the winning. Yes, absolutely. Now, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the NIL, because this is obviously the thing that has kind of changed the structure of all of college athletics. Um, what does what can the average fan do like that says, all right, uh, we're in a different landscape, whether you like it or not. That's just where we are right now. What can the average fan do to because these kids, they're getting paid right now. How do how do you do that? And what are your, do you have goals, per se, like as far as we'd like to reach this point, reach that point? How does that work with the NIL? Well, certainly we want our student athletes, are, and in this case, we're talking about football players, you know, the, the chance for these football student athletes to uh, to generate resources uh, off of their names, images, their likenesses, uh, business deals. How can they be engaged in the community doing that stuff? So, you know, our collectives is out there. There's different ways, but it is the new landscape. OK, it isn't an either or it isn't just buying tickets. It isn't just donating to the Wildcat Club. It isn't just being somebody that can help with facilities. This is a new component that will never change. Right. And we need to help, you know, kind of prime that pump, fuel that pump so that there are resources here that we can distribute. Um, our collective can distribute. Um, we can engage with the community. I think local businesses, how do you attach and provide? How can that person be engaged in your marketing efforts um, that you can dedicate those marketing dollars towards, uh, you know, towards a relationship with a student athlete? Um, how can you be part of? Uh, the, the, you know, our collective in football, uh, those are big pieces and those are big steps now that, again, it's not an either or we've got to help engage everyone on all these levels. So I, I you know, there's, there's different ways to get involved in that as, as much as, you know, buying apparel, you know, joining memberships, um, being involved in just straight donations, or again, community, what, what better way in Tucson? How about a bit, the businesses say, hey, let's really embrace these student athletes. Let's help them grow. Let's utilize their, you know, their identity um, to help those local businesses. Right. You know, again, folks, you have an opportunity to compensate them just like you do other employees or other opportunities that you bring in um, spokespeople to help your businesses. So I guess that's my my long uh, rambling way to say it. But I, I hope people will embrace the NL because it is. That is a competitive piece. That is an investment in our programs. I talk about basketball, football. This is in baseballs. It's in a lot. It's softball, a lot of our other sports. Um, so we've got to embrace it for our program to continue to be great. And it's a community thing, like you said, too. I get people all the time, and I think it's kind of misguided, but I understand where they say, well, why don't you just get a booster to write a $3 million check or something like that? Explain how, explain how the nitty gritty really works with this there, Dave. Well, you know, yes, are there those out there that can help in a significant way? Sure. But this is a year. This is kind of a yearly deal. We need people to invest in it. And and, and to me, it's more about the masses right. than it is about one individual or a couple of individuals. Right. Um, you know, and, and our program, 
unlike maybe some others that you see out there, you hear about, we, we, we just don't have the folks that are standing there doing that on a regular basis. Uh, we got great support again, tremendous support. Um, and I don't want to minimize anything that has already currently been done because it's phenomenal, quite frankly, right. where we are today. But to get to the next step and to continue to grow, we need masses, it, you know, kind of that compounding effect, right. uh, getting 100, 1,000, 10,000 people to do something, to be engaged in something. You know, just think about that. If you had 10,000 alums or fans or passionate people that could throw a little bit more over here, um, Boy, that that could be a big number when you start right. to, to put that together, whether that's a hundred or a thousand dollars times ten thousand, you start to get the big number. So I think that's where the next step is, is the mass um, growth in the in the collective area. Would you like to see some kind of regulatory thing here where obviously where they get paid, where kids get paid, obviously they get to live a really good life. But at the same time, it's not basically just highest bidder type situation as well. Well, absolutely. I, I think. You know, I talk about how important it is. I'm also a believer that we need guardrails. We need some guidance. We need some regulation. Um, I, I think that has to come maybe from a governmental group. Uh, right. I, I do. Um, we have a hard time regulating ourselves in, in this profession or in, in, in college athletic space. Um, so I would definitely like more regulation and more uh, refinement of this, of what is permissible and not, you know, it's just drifted to become not really about helping this, but you know, you, you hear these outlandish stories. I think some are, are certainly right. over uh, right. sold, but you know, you know, that it's becoming part of the recruiting process or inducements or people are getting engaged where they shouldn't be. So I'd like that to be better controlled. I'm all for sharing and providing more opportunity for our student athletes. We've done a tremendous job of that in the, in the past. And I think people forget about that. Uh, this is a new way uh, that, that people, that we can help our student athletes and help them grow while they're here um, through, through name, image, and likeness. And, and uh, you lay that on top of the things that we've currently already are doing for student athletes. Um, it's, it's quite remarkable. All right, Dave, I get people all the time that say they worry. They're like, well, you know what? This coach is doing really well. What are we going to do to secure him? I always tell them that's a good thing because if your coach is doing well, obviously people are going to be interested in, in them. So that's a good thing. Jed Fish has praised you many, many times without even being asked in pressers about Dave Hickey has been great. President Robbins has been great. Everything that I've needed, they've given. How does this workload going forward as the, uh, the, uh, the program continues to get better and people obviously are knocking on the door, becoming interested in Jet Fish? How does that work, especially with the whole contract thing? Well, hey, we want to provide an environment for, for Jed and for our coaches, for our assistants. Uh, we do this in all of our sports. You know, We want them to be here because they want to be at Arizona. Right. And um that always isn't, uh, you know, the biggest contract or something. But, you know, we want to make it the right thing for the people that want to be here. We, You know, there's more to this than just, hey, how much do you pay a coach? Right. How do we invest in programs? How do we invest in his staff? Continuity, consistency. Those are hard things to do. When you become a winning program, uh, I would say it, it does cost more, too. Right. Yes, there's more revenue and more opportunity, but it costs more. And you've got to be willing. That's why I say you've got to be willing. Fans have to be willing to invest in this and right. help us because there is not an unlimited uh, pot of money that, that we have or we're not generating enough money to to do those things. So, uh, you know, again, we're, we're committed to Jed, committed to the program and the direction will always be that way. You know, we, we already, you know, last year um, put together a new contract for Jed. Right. Uh, so, you know, we, we, this isn't something that we're not keeping our eyes on and we'll uh, we'll continue to do that. I know Jed feels really strongly about being here, loves what he's building. Uh, you know, that that's the other thing. You, you, do you really want to step over to something? Because that's generally you're moving somewhere where something needed to change. Right. We put so much into this. It is so, you know, you're building that house. Right. Um, do you want to go back to square one? You know, and so I think there's a lot of opportunity here for continued growth and success and a great lifestyle and a great opportunity for the coaches and for, for coach fish. And, um, you know, so that it's kind of how we handle it with all of our programs and right. uh, we try to do the very best we can for our head coaches. 
All right. Speaking of another home run hire, Tommy Lloyd, Arizona basketball is here. Um, obviously going off into the big 12 first question uh, after this year, first question I have people ask me is Tommy Lloyd obviously likes to schedule a gauntlet. I mean, it goes without saying you got Duke, you got Michigan state. Everybody knows going into the big 12, which is arguably the best basketball conference in the country. Is this something that Arizona basketball is, are, are you going to still uh, try to schedule at that type of level right there? Being that you are going into a conference that's got Kansas, Baylor, et cetera. Is this something you play it by ear? How does that work? Well, I think, you know, again, uh, really allow Tommy and his team to build the schedule uh, the right. way they feel is best for the program. Um, it's important for us to have home games. Right. We want to have some marquee home games. Uh, as you said, Tommy loves to schedule that kind of, those big games. And, 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 uh, you know, I agree with it. I think that's outstanding for our program and the identity. You know, I think this year was a little bit of a, a perfect storm. There are a lot of opportunities. Um, I'm, I'm not sure we'll do as many of those right. in the future, but that, that's up to Tommy and what he thinks best prepares his team for the long run. You're right. The schedule going forward, as we look beyond, uh, is going to be the conference schedule will be really, really a, a terrific one. Right. Uh, super challenging each and every night. So how do you balance all of that out the right way? So you position your program for success, but you also position for that, you know, postseason tournament run and, and where you're seated and all of the things that we all talk about. So that all goes into the scheduling piece. Um, uh, I, I'm uh, again, I'm really supportive of how Tommy's, you know, approaches it and looks at it. And I think every year is a little bit different right? based on the kind of players you have. What is the, uh, what is as far as travel goes, obviously the big 12 uh, is going to be releasing their football schedule here today. How does that work then for, I get people to ask me all the time, how does it work for the non-rev sports for lack of a better term right there? When you're, you're going to, you know, the central Florida's West Virginia's, et cetera. How is that? How does that work? Well, we're in the midst of that, of, right. of you know, formulating schedules that can be, uh, I believe I'm a supporter of some regionality to those. That's why I like, um, where we're headed next year. I mean, again, I, don't get me wrong. We are a full standing member of right. the Pac-12 right now, and we're going to embrace that and really celebrate it. But uh, as we go forward, you need to look at those scheduling models because the economics of these programs are really complex. When I'm, I talk about athletic programs right. and uh, you know, sending people all over the country, uh, there needs to be some coordination and some sense about that. Yeah, we'll go on the road and we'll go to – West Virginia and Central Florida, but how do you do that efficiently? And let's not forget, we're already doing that to a degree. Right. You right. Know, whether it's our softball team deciding, hey, we're going to go to Florida for a big tournament preseason. Well, now we may not do that, but we're going to go to Florida and West. You know, we're going to go to Florida. I don't, there's no softball, I don't believe, at, at West Virginia. I'm learning everyone's right. You know, menu of it, but uh, um, you know, again, efficiency, effective. Um, how, how does it economically? How does that work? So with our Olympic sports and each one of those sports has a little different modeling with scheduling because it's not all 16 offer all those sports. So you, Hey, we may not have to go all right. the way to the East or wow. It's, we got to go East because those programs are the ones that are, um, you know, there's more of those programs toward the East. So all of that is kind of how the sausage gets made, but uh, I am definitely a proponent of how do we make that. And that's no different in basketball either. Right. Or in football, right? To a degree, how do we play somewhat more regionally, less, you know, end to end? Just right. like those schools uh, on the east are saying, "Hey, I don't want to come west all the time. We, we've got different time zones, different times of the year, all that." So, you know, and then all of those schools in Texas and in the Upper Midwest, which you know, Oklahoma City slash Stillwater isn't that far when you think about. Well, we're not going to Pullman, Washington, or Eugene, right. or Seattle. You know, you kind of pivot and go the other way. So um, not quite. We've talked about that before. I don't think there's quite as much impact to us because we are still somewhat regional. But uh, I'm a proponent of how we regionalize the scheduling for all of our sports uh, right. as we move forward. Dave Hickey, you are the man. I was talking with somebody about this the other day. I think the Arizona basketball and football is in the best health it's been since probably the mid-90s with Dick Tomey and Lute Olson. You are a huge reason why right there. It feels sustainable. Dave, you and President Robbins are the man. Well, appreciate that, Mike. We got good leadership. President Robbins is outstanding, and and again, we we just have good people. I, I appreciate your you saying that, but this is a team effort. There's a lot of people that pull the rope here and make it work. Our team, our staff, 
there's just a ton. So uh, I'm happy for all of us and especially all of our fans and our alums. Uh, we deserve this. This is good. This is what Arizona athletics ought to be about um, is a, is a world, you know, nationally renowned worldwide renowned program and one that's moving forward all the time. All right, Dave, again, can we get a back the A before you sign off? Bear down, go cats back the A. My man, Dave Hickey, the great Dave Hickey. We'll be in touch, Dave. Thanks again, buddy. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Right, talk to you soon. All right. Dave Hickey right there, athletic director from the U of A. All right. We got a lot to break down right here, but first got to pay the bills. All right. Empire. I was remiss and I missed Empire yesterday. I do apologize about that. Here's the deal with Empire. You get to shop at home, convenience, the right product of your needs, uh, quick and professional installation and a price match guarantee right there. Again, schedule a free in-home estimate. All listeners can receive a $350 discount when you use the promo code code PHNX restrictions apply. See empire today.com backslash PHNX for details, all kinds of good stuff. They pride themselves on convenient shop at home service and help customers shop for floors when they use their floors so they can see exactly what their new floors will look like. Again, check it out. All right. Now we're going to talk about the schedule here a little bit, but first I didn't ask Dave about Circle K, but you know what? I guarantee that Dave goes to Circle K. There's no doubt about it because Dave Hickey is a smart man. He's uh, elevated to that stage in his life. And guess what? Most of those people attend Circle K at times. So again, check it out. Here's the deal. The Inner Circle. Join Inner Circle for free by downloading the Circle K app. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. All right. Dave hit the nail on the head right there. Folks, I get it. I have lived it. You have all lived it. With Arizona football, we'll just, we'll just go back. Uh, after the Arizona smacked uh, Miami in the Fiesta Bowl, returns a good percentage of its team, goes eight and four, and then kind of falls off the following year to seven and five. Then after that, 98, you go 12 and one. Everybody's preseason top three or four. Guess what happens? You fall down to... Somewhere in the uh, somewhere in that six and six realm, uh, Rich Rod not sustainable. Mike Soups not sustainable. I get it. Trust me, I get it. What Jed Fish is doing is sustainable. And again, I'm I'm just like all of you out there. Um, we've all got eyes. Some of us have four eyes, not just two. But um, you know what you're seeing out there. You see a team that each year is getting better and better across the board. You look at the quarterback. You look at the depth. Jaden Delora, Noah Fafita. You got Braden Dorman, who we haven't even talked about, four-star uh, kid. At the running backs, we already know. Jonah Coleman, DJ Williams, you name it. Wide receivers, offensive line. What this coaching staff has been able to do has been absolutely remarkable. And Jed has bought in. Again, you got to give Jed a lot, or you got to give folks a lot of credit here for following through on promises. Um, like Jose L. Roman Jr. says, um, we got, I got to eat fish on, crow, or I am, I got to eat crow on fish. I almost just said, I got to eat fish on crow, <laughs> but, um, it, yeah, the hire has been fantastic and he's done everything that he said he would do. So we got to pack, we got to pack that stadium. It's got to be, I'll give you an idea right here. I'm having supernumerary teeth removed from the roof of my mouth. Not fun. Not fun. I have no clue if I'm going to be able to talk. I've had this done one time before in seventh grade. And it was the worst pain of my life. But you know what? Even if I can't talk, I'm going to try to make it to the game right there. Because again, this is a big performance right there. And this staff absolutely deserves this. Um, big time, big time. You got to be able to make it out there. Because again, these players also look up there. And after a while, if you're a recruit, look at it this way. You say, man, Arizona's a top 25 team and they're not selling out. You've got to be able to do that. So again, check it out right there. You got to be at the game again. I might be the walking wounded, but I'm going to try to be there. You all need to try to be there as well again. Also, my DraftKings pick of the week is here. Guess what it is? I am picking Arizona to beat UCLA. I am back in the A to the fullest right there. And it is, uh, I feel very good about it. That is my DraftKings pick of the week. Tony Clifton, the great Tony Clifton says, Crow and fish in Arizona <laughs> delicacy. Yes, you can get that in many of your local uh, your local Safeways right there. Very good. Um, but I think Dave knows. Dave's a humble dude. I mean, you watch him. 
I every time I get Dave on, I always try to say, Dave, spike the football. Uh, he won't spike the football. But again, you watch what they've been able to do, and it's some pretty good stuff. You look at Arizona football right now. You look at Arizona basketball. Arizona basketball is a top 10 entity, not going anywhere without the, with Tommy Gunn, uh, as long as the Tommy Gunn's here. Jed Fish, you watch Jed Fish, and all he'll talk about is how the great support that he's gotten from the great Dave Hickey, all kinds of good stuff. Okay, Jose L. Roman Jr. again. Oh, by the way, I wouldn't consider Michael Crow a delicacy. MCAT, or BCAT, that is very funny. He is not a delicacy. Um, all right, now. Devil's advocate. We've sold out a few times and the team falls flat on their face. Still renew the season tickets, even in the Makovic. Jose, that's why you're the man. But again, this feels different. I'll give you an idea. Here's what I mean. Mike Stoops did a very good job, as our good friend Anthony Gimino always says, about getting Arizona football from point uh, C to point B. Wasn't going to be the one that was going to get it to point B to point A. Had some off the field issues, which everybody knew about. Wasn't sustainable. Rich Rod didn't want to be here. And uh, I think when he realized that he needed to be here, he didn't really uh, he didn't really embrace it. Jed Fish is happy to be here. He's embraced this community. And honestly, I think it's pretty fair to say at this point that um, we should embrace it back. Because you talk to alums. We're going to have Lamont Lovett on Friday, by the way. Lamont Lovett. And he said, what's remarkable about Jed is that he is like this behind the scenes as well. Not only is he like this behind the scenes, um, if he sees you, he's going to say, hey, you know, and if you go up to him and you're a play or an ex-player or whoever, and you say, there's this kid you might want to look at here. Sure, man, send me his tape. And he doesn't just throw that in the recycling bin or he doesn't put it in his spam folder. What he does is he actually looks at it. There's a few players on the team that are products of this philosophy right there. So again, what the what the work you see behind the scenes is the work that he does uh or the work you see publicly is the work that he does behind the scenes right there now uh let's talk a little bit about this uh, football schedule right here i don't have it in front of me yet but i do have it on good authority that arizona is going to play west virginia and central florida i'm going to add a little bit of a wrinkle here I'm calling my shot right now. West, uh, Rich Rod's going to be back at West Virginia next year. Arizona plays Rich Rod next year in Morgantown. How fun would that be? That would be all kinds of good stuff right there. I'm going to, like I said, that is, as the kids would say, that is a hot take. All right. Now, one other thing, too, that's a hot take wink, wink, a drink with a wink of THC. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Very, very good. All right, I like it. But again, here's what you got to do. You, uh, available in either 2.5 milligrams or 5 milligram cans, you can find Wink right here in Arizona. Look for Wink at all Sunday goods dispensaries in the Valley and Botanica Dispensary in Tucson. You can also save money online by going to Drink Wink and use promo code PHNX for 20% off. Um, all right. I didn't ask about the PAC 12 tourney in, uh, uh, Kansas city, mainly because that's already done. Um, here's my take. Yes. I'm with all of you guys. I love Las Vegas for the PAC 12 tournament. Um, I think that, uh, Oh, TJ Van Martyr. Okay, very cool right here. We've got, uh, we're getting some stuff coming in right here. I am, uh, this is breaking, it looks like. Okay, so we got Arizona, Colorado, Texas Tech, Houston, West Virginia, away, BYU, Utah, TCU, UCF. I'm all about that. Uh, we will, I will continue to talk about that. TJ, thank you, sir. Um, but when it comes back to, uh, when it comes back to Arizona football right here, I think they're going to do really well in the Big 12. I think, uh, I think culturally it's a good fit. Um, cause you've got fan bases that really care about sports as much as I like uh, making fun of Oregon state fans. Um, I got to give it to them. They're passionate. They want to be there. They're just go a little bit overboard at times. Yeah. Big 12 fans are like that without the oh, going overboard factor right there. Derek Pivko, TJ backs the A and honestly, um, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. I'm like I said, I'm excited to just see what's going to be able to be out here from a football perspective. And honestly, if you're Jed Fish and I have this on good authority, take it for what it's worth. You might think I don't know anything. You're generally right. But I have it on good authority that Jed Fish is very, uh, very, very excited about Arizona's possibilities in the Big 12 as well. Certainly not a diss towards uh, the Big 12 as they've got some really good teams. Uh, but 
I know that Jed Fish is feeling fairly good about it. All right, now let's talk a little bit about this schedule. Again, I rely on you people right here because you, and if Jacob Franklin isn't on the scene like he's not today, then the IQ level of the on-air talent goes way down, hence why it's just me right here. But again, so we play Arizona, Arizona State Community College here at home. Then you got CU, Texas Tech, Houston, West Virginia. Rich Rod coming back to Tucson there. I'm calling my shot. And then away, BYU, Utah, TCU, UCF. That's a tough one right there. Uh, Utah under Kyle Whittingham is always going to be a top 15 team. I like Kalani Sataki. BYU is, uh, thank you, Jacob Franklin. This is very good. Jacob Franklin to the rescue. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you got, that's, that's your, that's your in-conference schedule right there. You've got, uh, ASU, Colorado, Texas Tech, Houston, West Virginia, BYU. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Utah, TCU, UCF. And then you keep going on. Those are fun games. Here's what I, people did. People have bashed on the Big 12 football this year. I'm going to stick up for Big 12 football right here. The first thing that I am annoyed, the biggest thing that I'm annoyed by is the uh, people that say, um, the people that are like, oh, it's not very good. This is a fun conference right here because these are teams that play fun football. You know what I don't want to watch? The Big 10 West. I don't want to watch Purdue. I don't want to watch Iowa. I don't want to watch any of those crummy teams because they are boring. These teams are not boring right here. And on top of that, they're good. I think the Big 12, honestly, I know that some people, and thank you, Jacob, I think that some people are just looking at it and saying, oh, the Big 10, that's, you know, a status thing, whatever. From a pure sports perspective, I would much rather be in the Big 12. And honestly, it's not even close. Now, uh, we might say to yourself, Mike, uh, what else do you have for me right here? I appreciate you asking. Gila Resorts and Casinos. Here's the deal. You can visit GilaMillionDollarShowdown.com to get in on the action. For more information on Gila Rivers Resorts and Casinos and all they have to offer, head to PlayGila.com. Again, you can win up to $100,000 cash, 21 and over only, weekly pickums, win up to 100, win up to 1000 free bonus plays every day. Again, play free fun online for a chance to win $1 million, all kinds of good stuff. You would check it out right there. All right, now let's get back to some questions here, but I'll tell you what. I'm going to get one more read out of the way right here. Let's say you're looking at ASU and you're thinking to yourself, "Man, it would really stink to be an ASU fan. You would be correct. You know what ASU fans need more than anything? OGs. Oh, because you're dealing with a headache. You maybe need a little bit of sleep. OGs oh, right there, my friends. Check out our friends at OGs Brands for yourself and try one or a few of their many delicious flavors. Check them out across all socials at OGs Brands and online at OGsBrands.com. To find them at a local dispensary near you, you must be 21 plus to enjoy responsibly. TJ Van Martyr, TJ2 on Twitter. I believe 10 wins is doable next year. I think Arizona, looking at the rest of the schedule this year, I think Arizona is going to go three and one, which would leave Arizona with eight wins. I don't see why Arizona can't win 10 win games next year because just look at the players. Look at some, uh, uh, like, look at the, uh, some of the players coming back. You got Noah Fafita, obviously. Quarterback position's good. You got Jonah Coleman. You've got Rayshon Speedy Luke. Fam as we affectionately call him. Uh, then obviously, you got T-Mac. You got the wide receivers. You got all kinds of good stuff right there. Um, that uh, That's a nice little, uh, that's a nice little uh, uh, triumvir, uh, triumvirate? Yeah, same thing. And at the offensive line positions, you bring back Big Jonah. You got Wendell Moe. Wendell Moy, I guess you've got to Josh Baker. You've got a bunch of different players. And then on defense, almost everybody comes back. You lose Taylor Upshaw, obviously a big loss, but I think it's very well uh, situated for Arizona to uh, to be able to do very well in their first year. Jervis Williams. Jervis, always appreciate the kind words. Saw your interview with Josh Neighbors. Nice work. Josh is a good dude. I was happy to be on there. Um, now, let's see. How many players do, in fact, come back? Jose L. Roman Jr. Um, I think pretty much every. I mean, T-Mac's not draft eligible. Jonah's not draft eligible. Um, Noah's obviously not go uh, leaving. Um, I think almost all these dudes do come back. I mean, I could be wrong on that. I don't have any inside information, but 
I do think that uh, Arizona is uh, going to be just fine. And like I said, I do think that uh, Jed Fish knows this as well. All right. Now, one other thing here we got. I got to read Empire again because I was remiss in my responsibilities last time about Empire. And again, this is all kinds of good stuff, especially when it comes to home, uh, home floors, everything right here. Um, with Empire Today, you get to shop at home convenience, the right product for your needs, quick and professional installation and a price match guarantee is the best place to get new flooring. So, of course, they have copycats. Empire has copycats. These these copycats. But Empire can't uh, but Empire Today can't be beat on quality service, uh, speed, you name it. Empire Today. Um, now, again, here's it. it uh, let's see here. Schedule a free in-home visit. Estimate uh, today, all listeners can receive $350 off when they use promo code PHNX. Restrictions apply. See empiretoday.com backslash PHNX for details. Jesse Johnson. Um, oh, yeah. Jervis Williams. Uh, let's see here. Demond Williams, four-star quarterback out of Basha coming in here. Best quarterback in the city or in the state my friends. So yes. And, uh, Jesse Johnson, we can ask any question you want. Uh, do we know if zoom is committing tomorrow? Supposedly he's committing tomorrow, but I'm just going to say this. I would be surprised if he ends up at Arizona. Maybe he, uh, maybe he, maybe he does, but I would be very surprised if he did end up in Arizona, but we will gladly take him TJ Upshaw Cowing, uh, and Morgan are notable departures. Yes, they are very notable departures. Michael Wiley as well. Um, but overall, you return a lot of talent right there. All right. As we all know, this, there is no better time to back the A. Dave Hickey is the man. We appreciate Dave Hickey in a big way right there. Um, and again, all of you one, all of you out there, you're the real ones that make this show go. Again, I'm going to be off tomorrow. I'm having some very... Uh, like I said, I'm having supernumerary teeth removed. Um, it's, a, it's a rare hereditary thing where they pull teeth out of the roof of your mouth. Had it done in seventh grade was the worst pain that I've ever had. And I've broken my jaw before. Hard to believe. But but I will be back. We'll be back with you Friday. The great Lamont. Love it coming on here. And then obviously we got Arizona UCLA. All of that. But as always, uh, Jose Roman, that's funny. All right. On that note, though, big, big kudos to Dave Hickey. The great Jacob Franklin behind the scenes making me sound way better than I normally should. And all of you guys out there, again, taking tomorrow off, be back with you on Friday. But as always, back the A, get out to Arizona Stadium. Dave Hickey, I think, made the best point possible about getting out there. Got to support these guys and what they're doing. On that note, signing off. Appreciate all the kind words from all of you. We will be back with you Friday. You have been listening to the AZ Wildcats podcast. <laughs> Y'all silly like the mayor. 